Hello, happy July 4th, and welcome to another leak code problem. We're going to be doing the problem of the day for July 5th today, and it is longest subarray of ones after deleting one element. So let's just say if you get this problem in an interview, you should be pretty happy you got it. It's a pretty easy one. So you have some numbers, like this, and they ask you to give you the longest subarray of ones, and it has to be contiguous after deleting one element, and you have to delete one element. So here it's pretty straightforward. You would delete this zero, so you'd get three. Then in example two, they have this. Zero, one. So it's gonna be this. If you delete this zero, you would get five. And finally, in the last one, you have to delete one element, and so you would delete one of the ones and you'd get a two. So let's actually think about how we would do this and we will use the middle example. So we have zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, zero, one. Okay. So we're asked, we have to delete one element, right? We can't delete any more. So obviously any subarray with more than one zero is out. Like this does not work. So that's pretty straightforward. So we need a subarray with at most one zero. It can have no zeros. Like a subarray like this would work. We would just delete a one. And so one thing we can recognize is as long as we have a subarray with at most one zero, it doesn't really matter like if we have a zero or not, because if we have a zero, we're not gonna we're gonna delete the zero. And if we have a one, then we're gonna delete the one. So for example, for this, the answer would be two. And for this, the answer would also be two. So we just have to maintain the property that our subarray has one zero. And how do we do that efficiently? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We can just use a sliding window. So we can just, every time we hit a zero, we can just have some you know number that counts our zeros. And every time we have too many zeros, we will just shrink our sliding window. So what's that gonna look like? We're gonna start from the left. We're gonna move this sliding window here. We're gonna keep growing. And obviously at every iteration, we're gonna check the length and update the result. But as soon as we get to this point, now we have two zeros, so now we have to shrink it. So we're gonna shrink it down to this. And now we can keep going, we can keep going, we can keep going, we can keep going. We still have one zero. Now we have two zeros. So we have to shrink it. And so we're gonna be shrinking, 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 shrinking down to this. And then finally we keep going. And so at every iteration, you either shrink it down till you have one zero, or you just, like, you can just have a while loop there. Like if you, while you have more than one zero, shrink it to what you want. And then once your subarray is uh, like matches the criteria, if it either has one zero or no zeros, you know your answer is gonna be the length of the subarray minus one. Because if it's one zero, like for this, this would be three. But if it was all ones, you still have to delete a one, so it would also be three. So you don't really care if you have a zero or one, you just need to make sure that you only have one zero. So it's a pretty straightforward sliding window problem. And now I think we have everything we need to be able to solve it. Okay, so let's do some coding. So we're gonna have a result. We are gonna have a zero count or some variable. We're gonna have a left. I think that's all we need. And I think I showed this in other problems. You don't need to declare a right. Your right can just be looping through the num. So you can just say like this. So what are we doing? Pretty straightforward. We need to update our zero count every time we hit a new element. So just do zero count plus equals one if nums right equals uh, zero, right? Else zero. So we're just going to update it by one if the number is zero. Otherwise, we don't need to update it. Pretty straightforward. Now we can have a while loop. So while zero count is greater than one we need to be updating our left and getting rid of zeros. So that's also pretty straightforward. So we can pretty much use this line again. So now we're gonna do a minus equals one if nums left equals zero, else zero. And then we're gonna update our left, uh, our left part of the sliding window. So left plus equals one. And so now this will ensure that once we get, uh, there's some slight tabbing issue. Uh, hopefully. There we go. Okay, so now after this while loop, we are sure to have a good sliding window. 
So now it's pretty straightforward. Now let's just get like the length of the sliding window. We'll call it curve or something. It's gonna be right minus left. And that's because normally the length is right minus left plus one. But like I said, if we have a valid sliding window like this, our length is actually only three elements. It's not four, regardless if they're all ones. So like if we had these three ones, our answer would be two. And if we had this, our answer would be three because if we have a one, we're deleting a one. And if we have a zero, we're always deleting zero. So our actual length of the longest number of ones is just the right minus left. We're not doing the plus one here. And so we actually, we don't even need this uh, curve. We can just do a resmax here. It's always, so we can just do this. And now we're guaranteed to have a sliding window because our zero count is not greater than one. So we have a valid sequence. Now simply we just return the result here. And that should pretty much do it. Definitely quite an easy problem, I think, compared to, you know, most, like they've been giving you some, a lot of hard problems, but this one, pretty straightforward. As soon as you recognize that you just need to maintain a valid zero count and your zero count can be one or zero, it doesn't matter. You're going to get the same exact result. Okay, so let's think of the time and space here. So over the time, it's a standard sliding window problem. We're not doing anything fancy, so that's big O of n, where n is the length of the numbers. And for the space, it's also a sliding window, so we're not declaring anything else. We just have local variables. All right, so that's going to be it for this problem. Nice, easy July 4th problem. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.